you're at the Fortune Global Forum in South Africa. I understand there's been a lot of talk there, and, and the focus of it is the new global opportunity. But I understand there's been a lot of talk there about the financial crisis being a Western problem. Can you paint that picture for us a bit of the conversations going on on that front? Well, sure. I mean, specific to uh, many African nations, um, what has been such a tremendous story has been they've been insular. They've been insular in terms of their investments. They've been an insular in terms of their dependence upon their own consumption. Um, it's a it's a story that the West can learn a lot from. We've been dependent upon so many other markets, particularly so many foreign markets, um, for our investment, um, and you just don't have that story here. So, um, you know, every every uh, economy is impacted to a certain degree. Degree, but to a much smaller degree uh, in Africa, in Brazil, um, uh, uh, by the financial crisis. And the more insular you have been over the last uh, you know, four years, the better you've fared. You know, and the other, uh, the other stark difference is um, you don't have the leverage issues um, that you have in the West um, in many of these uh, developing countries um, because they didn't have access to, um, to over-lever. So uh, they're healthier by default, I guess. Healthier by default. That's a good way to put it. What, what about Europe's impact more broadly? I mean, we've, we've seen the impact on their currency. Uh, we've seen the potential impact on our economy, our market selling off in a major way in, in the heat of all of that. But what about globally, the impact of Europe's debt crisis? Um, I think you just see a drag on global growth. So when I talk about certain states dragging on the U.S. economy, certainly Europe's, uh, you know, with austerity measures, uh, at a minimum you know that growth is going to be um, de minimis. And that will that will drag on the overall economy, mm-hmm. be it consumption, be it its ability to invest um, uh, uh, globally um, on so many levels. And uh, I, th- I think everyone feels that. Again, if you are more dependent um, upon uh, outside foreign investment, uh, that leaves you more vulnerable. Um, you know, many uh, uh, African countries are, are less dependent upon, upon that um, and so have fared better. And it's also an issue of, you know, for the U.S. or the Europe to achieve growth, they're much bigger numbers. For so many African countries, so many developing countries, uh, the numbers are smaller, higher growth is more achievable. What are global business leaders there, Meredith, talking about in the wake of the financial crisis and their concerns about a double dip in, in U.S. housing that you've been so vocal about that affects all, all economies, not just the U.S. economy. Um, there has what's been fascinating about this conference is there hasn't been a lot of focus on U.S. housing. There hasn't been a lot of focus on you know state and local uh, uh, fiscal crises. Um, the focus has really been on the vibrancy of um, the South African market, the African economy, um, and sort of this this uh, very you know well guarded secret of how prosperous uh, the South African economy and how much potential um, the South African economy really holds. So there. There's been more focus on that, and that's been, frankly, a lot more positive and and interesting to explore uh, than the woes of the United States. Uh, Indeed. You were uh, just on a panel there at the forum with Dick Parsons, the chairman of Citigroup, and he talked about how the U.S. economy is the best, the strongest in the world. Do you agree with him? I think on a relative basis, um, the U.S. benefits today from having safety and scale in terms of its debt market. So you see a flight to quality um, in terms of foreign monies still going into the dollar, that be it Chinese, be it by um, uh, uh, by so many uh, uh, foreign nations flocking to the dollar because it offers scale, because it offers safety. And so from that perspective, um, he's right. Um, over time, that will uh, that will diminish as you have stronger economies develop throughout the world. But at the moment, you look at the size of the U.S. debt market, you know, an $8 trillion odd, uh, uh, this is just for um, uh, stated debt, um, uh, $8 trillion market, any of the European sovereigns are no more than a trillion dollars. They're almost uninvestable if you have large pockets of, um, uh, of, of liquidity that you need to store safely. So the U.S. benefits from that. Um, there are a lot of good things. You know, the, a lot of the U.S. banks have taken um, some of their medicine and are further along than you would argue some of the European banks. Uh-huh. Um, and a lot of the, you know, at least you know for the U.S. banks, they're loaded with um, consumer debt. A lot of the European banks are loaded with uh, uh, sovereign debt. Right. So it, it's just it, it's just an apples to oranges comparison.